I've grown my real estate portfolio from about $1 million in value to over $20 million in value, all thanks to the mentors I've had. But it's more than the value of my portfolio that has increased. My mindset has changed. My planning and follow through have changed. And I accredit all of that to the guidance I've had from my mentors. So in this video, I wanna share with you the five most important things my real estate mentors have taught me. Stick around until the end of the video where I'll share the thing holding most investors back from working with a mentor. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help a thousand people create a million dollars of net worth with real estate investing. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. So let's dive in. Number five, start thinking of your real estate investing as a business. So many investors get into real estate as a side hustle. They have a full-time job and they buy a rental property or invest in a pre-construction condo as an alternative to investing their money into mutual funds or the stock market. But one of the items that is often overlooked is that in that scenario, many investors forget to make decisions the same way they would if they were launching a new business. The great thing about thinking of your real estate investing as a business is that it removes many of the emotions and we start to make decisions based on fundamentals numbers, and ultimately what makes sense for your end goal. The other reason that I love looking at my real estate investing as a business is that I'm constantly looking at how to scale that business. And the only way to scale a business is to take a step back and figure out how you can work on your business and not in it. If you are spending 40 to 60 hours a week on a renovation site, sure, you can save a lot of money, but you'll only be able to do one project at a time because you can only be in one place at one time. But if you can figure out how to manage multiple projects in that same 40 hour work week, that's when you can see significant growth. Number four is discovering your why. I know it's cliche, but it's important to figure this out. Ask yourself, why do I want to be a real estate investor? What's the end goal? It's not enough to say that you wanna be wealthy or that you wanna make a lot of money. The question you need to ask yourself is what will that money allow you to do? Will it allow you to go on amazing vacations or put your kids through school or donate to your favorite charity? Or will it simply give you the freedom to spend more time with your friends and your family? Money can be the tool that allows you to do those things, but just making money is usually not enough. I'll be very honest with you. I've always struggled with my why. Growing up, money was always something that my family had a bit of a struggle with. My parents always worked and they always had decent jobs, but there was never a time when they didn't have to worry about money. And that was a big motivator for me when I got into real estate, but I quickly realized that having enough money was a sliding scale. When I go out to dinner or when I go to the grocery store, I don't look at the prices. So there is a certain amount of financial freedom that I enjoy, but that's not my main motivator for being a real estate investor. My focus now is on having the financial freedom to be able to live where I want to live and be able to give back through things like this YouTube channel and also volunteering for different organizations, such as the nonprofit that I adopted my dog through. Being able to help an organization like that and truly have an impact is much more of a motivator than simply being rich. There are a lot of miserable rich people out there, so money cannot be your sole motivator. Number three is don't be afraid of debt if it allows you to build your business. We are conditioned to believe that our real estate investing portfolio has to be grown with institutional financing at the lowest rates possible. But if we're always relying on getting a mortgage at 2% to build our portfolio, we will struggle to grow. I'm constantly borrowing money at 10 to 12% on a short-term basis in order to be able to get properties in my control, do with them what I need to do, and then put long-term financing in place at a more reasonable interest rate. You do, however, need to build in these interest rates into your projects and run your numbers accurately. And if the project can't sustain a private loan at 12% interest, then maybe it's not the right kind of project. I am no fortune teller, but I can almost assure you that interest rates will rise because they can't really go any lower. And if your project only works at today's interest rates, then it may be time to reconsider your strategy. Number two is a little controversial, and that is that sometimes we need to sell our properties in order to grow our portfolio. So many investors have the mindset that they never never sell anything, but that could be holding them back from significant growth inside of their portfolio. I can share an example of this, and that's that I recently sold my downtown condo in Toronto. For the longest time, I would not have even considered this move because I was of the mindset you should never sell anything. The problem with this condo is that the maintenance fees keep climbing. They are now at $800 a month, but the rents have not been keeping pace.
case. And I have a very small mortgage on this property. So I have over $500,000 sitting in equity in this one property. If I leverage the property anymore, it won't cash flow. I could take the $500,000 and get it earning money for me elsewhere and then take the profits I'm making to offset the cost of the condo. But I like to make sure that my investments are self-sustainable. That way, if the $500,000 investment doesn't make the money I expected it to for a month or two, I'm not out of pocket on the condo. The other part of this that I see many investors fall prey to is that they don't want to pay any tax. If you have a good accountant and a good structure in your real estate investing business, you should be able to be creative in a legal way in order to reduce your tax burden. The sale of this condo will trigger $50,000 in capital gains, but with strategic planning and a solid real estate accountant, I should be able to get that down to around ten to $15,000 in taxes. This is the cost of doing business and it's unavoidable. So get over it, pay your taxes and move on. There's also an opportunity cost to this money sitting in equity. Opportunity cost means that I could potentially be earning a much higher return with that money than having it sitting in a condo that will only make money if the market goes up. So don't be afraid to sell every once in a while if it can help you move your business forward. And the number one thing my mentor taught me is to analyze your portfolio on a regular basis. In other words, get your money right. Wait, don't leave this video, this point is super important. It's crucial to know where you are at with all of your financials. Where do you sit personally? How much money do you spend? How much money do you make? What is coming in? What is going out? Do you have a plan for saving or growing your portfolio? Do you analyze your existing rentals on a quarterly or at a minimum annual basis to understand how much they are making? If you don't know any of this information, it's nearly impossible to make educated decisions. That's why it's the number one thing on my list that has helped me grow my real estate investing business. For instance, if I know that my average return on investment for properties that perform well in my portfolio is 20% annual return, if I see something in my portfolio that's only returning 10 to 12% on an annual basis, it's time for me to liquidate that and use that capital in an area that I can earn a higher rate of return. These are not necessarily easy decisions to make sometimes, but when you know your numbers inside and out of your personal situation and your real estate investing portfolio, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it and you can simply rely on what the numbers tell you to do. As promised, I wanted to share the biggest reason why investors hesitate to work with a mentor. I hear it all the time. I can do this on my own or if I take the money I was going to spend on coaching, I might be able to buy another property. There are exceptions to every rule and I've seen some self-taught millionaires, but in my experience, if you want to grow your portfolio quickly and with as few costly errors as possible, at some point you will need to invest in a coach, a mentor, or continuing education of some sort. Now having said that, this doesn't have to cost you tens of thousands of dollars, but I can tell you to this point that I have personally spent probably close to $100,000 on coaching and mentorships throughout my real estate investing career. This past year, I was able to double my real estate portfolio value from $10 million to $20 million. So even if I spent $100,000 thousand dollars on coaching this year to be able to build my real estate portfolio by ten million dollars that only works out to spending one percent of that increase in value on a coach or mentor again you don't need to spend a hundred thousand dollars on coaching start small and as you grow invest back in your education and your coaching for those of you interested in working with me I run a series of master classes that also include group coaching sessions for more information on my various offerings you can visit my website at darrenvoros.com if you use the promo code YouTube you can also take advantage of $200 off any of my courses and trainings. This promo code is available to the first 50 people who capitalize on this opportunity. If you have any questions about anything related to real estate investing, feel free to drop those in the comments section below. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you soon.